one lights a stick on fire and gets a glowing orange. The captain does not react. He takes two more burns the same way, and then Juan begins to rub the jelly into all three wounds. Does he feel anything? He's beginning to feel it. <laughs> the captain stands with a far off look in his eye. Then he sits down and puts his head in his hands. He says that everything is spinning and that he can feel it in his gut. They pour a bucket of water over his burns and head because they think it will counteract the venom. <laughs> <laughs> and then the captain jumps into the piss river. He looks at me and says that he's fine. Now it's my turn. Juan picks up a stick off the ground and lights it on fire. It's much thicker than the sticks the Maya Runa use. <laughs> no sensation yet, no sensation yet. Now it stings. The sight of the burn now hurts a lot more than when he initially did it. Still no psychoactive effect, no psychedelic effect, no visual distortions. Gracias, gracias. Nothing at first, then slowly an opiated high creeps over me, a drunken headedness. It feels good. I feel high <clears throat> or sort of a little bit dissociated. It's not necessarily unpleasant. <laughs> What's your feeling right now, man? Very little. I mean, I feel an extreme pain in my arm where I was burned and had venom rubbed in the wound. Mm -hmm. And I feel a little bit high. Um, in a good way. <laughs> Let me get one more. <laughs> you got it that time? Did you get it that time? Let's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Good, yeah, everybody make sure to touch it. Oh, oh God, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh. <laughs> Juan then reapplies the poison jelly to my wounds. Get it in. Get it in. Get it. Wound. Get it. Reapply to the other wounds while you're at it. Oh. Okay, please fan me. <laughs> okay. If they need to give me a thousand of these, I'll fucking do it. Now there's a, a new sensation taking over a arm, like a, like a like it's falling asleep, like a pins and needles sort of sensation. It's happening in both of my hands, like I'm losing sensation in both my hands. It's feeling more sinister now. It's very strange. My mind is saturated with a distinct uh, drunken weirdness. It's bad. It's unpleasant.
part of me wants to lay down, just like lay down in the hammock or something. <laughs> I feel like a frog. <laughs> the people that surround me fan me like I'm an emperor. I lay shirtless on a plastic tarp. My stomach is in excruciating pain. The frog and me exchange a glance. I think I should do another one. I would consider doing another one. I request a fourth burn, more sapo than the captain. Who's the muhair now? <laughs> Numero quattro. Oh wow, yeah. I'm feeling much more strongly in my head now. Oh, yeah. The drunkenness in my head is very strong. There's some mild closed eye visuals, but it does feel slightly psychedelic. I think it might be best for me to lay in my hammock now. <clears throat> Unless they think I should wash my wings. I'm feeling extremely woozy. The captain insists that I submerge myself in the shit river in order to sober myself up. I say I don't want to. There's no pharmacological reason that getting wet would clear the venom from my bloodstream, but he insists, so I let him pour gasoline jugs of piss over my head. Já tiramos todo o leite, agora nós vamos soltar para ir para a mata de novo. É. Agora. Pronto. As the frog is returned to a tree, I lay down in the boat because I'm feeling extremely nauseous. The poison that was still in my blood begins working its purging magic. The captain takes me out to a private clearing on the edge of the river. For most people, the frog causes uncontrollable vomiting, but I did the frog on an empty stomach. So in my case, the purge came the other way. Aspects of the experience were euphoric, and I would consider repeating it, but I'm pretty certain I could achieve the exact same effects by rubbing the jelly inside my nose. Neither the water nor the purging made me sober, and I lay in my hammock feeling dissociated and nauseous for the next three hours. I feel really fucked up, really exhausted, like I just ate a pound of Valium, and uh, I don't feel too great. I think I could still vomit at any moment. Um, oh, my stomach is, yeah, just an awful turmoil. I wake up today feeling like shit. I do not have supernatural powers, nor do I have a resistance to thirst or hunger. How these drug rumors get started, I have no idea. Indians, right? I eat an egg for breakfast and pet the monkey orphan's head one last time. 
Goodbye, little monkey. I wish him the best. I hope he grows up big and strong and that he's treated like a, a child. Then it's time for gift giving. We give the shaman's family our hammocks, our boots, as well as an erotic porcelain statuette of two pigs making love, which they seem to cherish. Gracias, obrigado, gracias, gracias. Gracias, obrigado. Uh, I like them. So we got what we wanted. I did the frog. It was insane. I have the scars right now, which are uh, starting to heal. But we also went into the jungle and got a giant bale of ayahuasca vine. And uh, it left me a little hungry for some ayahuasca. So once we get back to Tabatinga, we're gonna look around. Apparently it's very common to find the DMT containing leaves and uh, we'll mix up some ayahuasca on our own. Returning to the city fills me with an incredible joy. My mosquito bites become less itchy, my sunburns less peely, and my intestine less colonized by parasites. The skies are clear, and the banks of the Amazon are monotonously beautiful. Tomorrow I will prepare the magical brew. Tonight I rest. Tabatinga and we're on our way to meet the ayahuasca shaman who's going to give us something they call toe, which I think is the DMT containing plant. Because when we were still in the jungle, the shaman there only gave us half of the ayahuasca brew. So now we're going to get the rest and we'll mix it up at the hotel. We arrive at the shaman's house, and I'm surprised to find it's a wizened old woman wearing an all-pink outfit. We ask her if she has two way to sell to us. She tells us she does, but that if I were to drink it, I would permanently lose my mind. Can you ask her if Tue has other names? The Peruanas, su nombre es Tuez. De, de Colombia, le nombre es Borrachera. She leads us through her house and then out to her garden of medicinal plants. She brings us to a plant and tells us that is Tue. This is the Tue, I'm assuming. Some people are calling it the Colombian devil's breath. They call it a angel's trumpet, devil's trumpet. It's a delirium. It will give me a miserable nightmare trip. And uh, this is what the shaman was telling me that I needed to get. It was the, this devil's trumpet stuff, which is, it's good we cleared that up. And uh, he didn't have any on him at the time because that would have been really unfortunate for me. She then brings me to another corner of her garden <laughs> where we see a small tree with lush green leaves. Mm, fantastic. This is the Chacruna or Psychotria viridis plant. Um, it contains DMT and pretty much nothing else. This is, I think, the, the gold standard for uh, ayahuasca and brewing. We pay for the Chacruna and leave for our hotel with all the ingredients needed to brew ayahuasca. Our hotel was nice enough to let me use their kitchen brewing ayahuasca for the rest of the afternoon. In two hours, I'll strain what's left, and that will be that. Here we are at our hotel room in Tabatinga, and I just finished brewing the ayahuasca. This is the MAOI, it's the ayahuasca vine. Definitely the worst thing I've ever tasted, and I've tasted a lot of terrible, terrible drugs. But uh, I'm gonna try and get through about half of this. 
Here I go. Oh my god. Ah. Okay. <sighs> Little sips. It's too difficult to swallow big ones. Around sunset, I start drinking the vine. It's truly the most awful tasting substance on the planet, and each sip takes me within a nano gag of vomiting. Sip, gag, sip, gag. The vine hits me like a tsunami of warm milk. I've never been so drowsy in my life. I then drink the chacruna leaves. I fall asleep and have strange apocalyptic dreams. As I fall deeper into an ayahuasca-induced trance, strange visions and dark premonitions overtake me. In the midst of these visions, I realize that the sapo is only one amphibian enigma in an endless jungle of mind-altering mysteries. There is so much territory left to explore. Hypnotic giraffe bone marrow in Sudan. Sedative sea sponges in the Caribbean. Dream fish of the Pacific Ocean. Narcotic silkworms in China. And unknown synthetics from magical laboratories across the globe. Whoa. Oh my god. <laughs> The ayahuasca makes me extremely tired. I take a Ritalin to combat the sleepiness. Yep. I guess it's time for a walk. Coma juice. <laughs> oh. This just made me into a thousand year old man. It's really just like the boat we were in. It's the exact same boat. Only, uh, it's a lot. There's a lot more feathers in the boat we were on. And that's one hammock in the middle. It's a one person. Frog was good. What's next?